Last night, I saw Spider-Man Homecoming, and this video is my review and first reactions to that film. Spoiler alert, I really, really, really liked it. What is up, everybody? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. Guys, last night, I had the distinct pleasure of going to see Spider-Man Homecoming. The roller coaster ride with me and this movie has been kind of interesting. I've been hyped for it. Then they were putting out too much promotional material. I felt like I was seeing the whole movie. And so I stayed away from the promotional material. And therefore, it kind of drifted to the back burner for me, so to speak. And I wasn't really, really hyped to the level that I have been for some of these past comic book movies. Which may or may not have been a good thing. Um, there's also what happened with the Sony deal and everything that's going on kind of behind the scenes, which has just interested me so much more than this particular movie. But man, I, I gotta say, I was completely wrong to do all of that. This movie deserves all of the hype. This movie deserves all of your focus. This is a great, great movie, guys. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of talk you through all of the things that I like. We're gonna keep it non-spoilery. Um, but I do want to go over various things that I liked, a few little gripes that I have here and there, but then give you kind of an overall score for the movie um, at the end of the video. So the one thing that I think is so great about this movie is its tone, and its tone is so Spider-Man. I don't know how else to describe this. It is so clear immediately when you're watching this movie that... All of the other studios, well, I guess it was just Sony, but all of those other films have really come short on certain aspects of the Spider-Man character as we have come to know him uh, through comics, through uh, years and years and years, through animated series, uh, whether it be the one in the 90s and then the one now uh, with Ultimates, which is a great show, uh, through video games, through all sorts of different media and I think that it, these other studios, you know, they took the Spider-Man thing and made what they thought would be a good movie. This movie is a great Spider-Man film. It nails the humor. I mean, this movie is very, very funny. And it's unlike moment, or unlike Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which is a very funny film. This movie is humorous. You know, with one character being humorous, pretty much, and that is Spider-Man, and his shtick and the way that he goes about things is absolutely hilarious. There are various films where he has interactions with people, and they are like, you know, you need to get better at this aspect of, you know, being a hero, or, you know, you, you really haven't done this before, have you? And, like, he just literally talks with them. And it's very, very cool. The The nature of the conflict with Peter is you understand that this is a kid that, that went to Germany randomly and, you know, goes through this incredible experience. And he's so nerded out and so geeking out about everything that he sees that it's that it, you can't help but get like a boyish excitement for it. It brings you back to the reason that you like the phase one Marvel films in the first place. The reason we like Avengers and all of that had a lot to do with the fact that we just were marking out over even seeing some of these things, right? Which I talked about in a uh, podcast I did yesterday. You know, that is the thing. He's really us. He's the audience in that moment because we're really, you know, so geeking out. Now, one of the problems I've had with the MCU as of late is that, man, things are just so... I don't want to say... It, it, they are formulaic, okay? Things are formulaic in the MCU, but it's more than that. Tonally, they've they've come to become really formulaic. And we have these larger-than-life characters doing these larger-than-life things, but because we only focus on that aspect and we only ever really see them interacting with other godlike characters or doing these crazy things, we do not get inside their head the same way we do with like let's say Punisher or Daredevil on Netflix it's just not as intimate it doesn't feel as real and there's a our you know look for me my suspension of disbelief is getting harder and harder right but Spider-Man does this really awesome thing it utilizes the MCU it utilizes it in a beautiful way but puts us on the ground level right away there is a scene explaining who the vulture is and who these guys all are the tinkerer you know the shocker and and that and it is just really 
the scene embodies the conflict between these super powerful people that really don't know maybe what's happening to the rest of the world as they make these big decisions and the people on the ground level. Like these are people in New York just trying to provide for their family, just trying to do the right thing. And I think it's really cool that you know, not only your hero, but your villain, you know, and I don't want to say too much without, you know, otherwise I'll spoil, but they're both grounded in uh, reality. It's really, really cool. So I think that the, the tone of Spider-Man kind of reignites that love and that boyish like fire I had it burning inside of me for the phase one Marvel films. I mean, it was just so freaking cool. And Spider-Man literally commentates on that and in very humorous ways. It's, it, you know, we heard that John Hughes thing, right? Everybody was talking about how it's going to have this John Hughes flavor. I mean, it's John Hughes for sure. And there's even a, a little bit of a, and John Hughes Easter eggs kind of sprinkled throughout, but it's more than just John Hughes. It's really clever. John Hughes humor, hints of the Deadpool humor, right? Because Deadpool and Spider-Man are very kind of similar, right? I mean, if you've ever even seen some of the animated series where they hang out together, you know, they have a really interesting dynamic because they're very similar with their quips and whatnot. Uh, same thing with the Spider-Man vs. Deadpool comic book that's been kind of popular over the past couple months. They are very similar characters. Now, Spider-Man is a heart of gold and doesn't kill people, right? Uh, which is really, really cool. It's, that is, I think, an important aspect of the, uh, of the film as well. He, he they, honestly, Marvel kind of out Deadpool's Deadpool in a way that, like, seven year old kids can enjoy it. Like, man, my theater was packed with people, uh, that were either seven year olds, nine year olds, or they were adults that felt like seven year olds and nine year olds in those moments. It was really, really freaking cool. So, look, I, I just have to say, like, it's so great that Marvel got this character back. They understand the character. They're treating it with such respect. It has a Spider-Man feel, man. That feeling you get when watching the Ultimate Spider-Man that's kind of funny. And then, it, you know, you've got that kind of Scotty Young, you know, weird character thing that he cuts to. They, we don't have that in the movie, but I'm saying that that same kind of shtick, that same kind of humor is injected into this movie and it feels so natural. It feels so cool and not forced like something like Guardians of the Galaxy 2. You have real stakes moments as well. There's real emotional anchors to Peter without ever mentioning Uncle Ben. You can, this movie is ripe with different emotions, not just, you know, high school esque ones, you know, the, the, the crux of the conflict for Peter. And I'm sorry, I'm a little all over the place. Let's get back to it. He gets back from uh, Germany and Tony gives him the suit, you know, says good job or whatever, and then literally just kind of never talks to him again. Without spoiling some of the Iron Man moments, I will just say that if you were worried that Iron Man was going to be in this film too much, put that worry to bed immediately. That that does not happen. He is not in this film too much. In fact, he might not be in the film enough. His presence is definitely felt, though. But, you know, I digress. His The thing is, he comes back from Germany being this amazing thing, this amazing experience. He feels like he's contributed. He feels like he can do so much more. And of course, like being an Avenger would be the craziest thing ever. There's a line in the movie where somebody who knows Peter as Spider-Man says, look, you're an Avenger. If anybody can get with this girl, it's going to be you. And that's so true. Like put yourself in the mind of a teenage boy in that world where the Avengers exist. They're like gods, man. They're like, they're like, that would be like being on an NBA team if you were really good at basketball in high school, like just literally getting to work out and secretly be on an NBA team, right? But so Peter comes back and Tony's really hands off. There's nothing going on. There's no big crime. He's, he's, he's literally stopping. One of my favorite moments is him just roaming around the city and you, he, you connect with him because he's just gone through school and he's like, Oh my God, I had to act normal for six to eight hours. Thank God I can finally be Spider-Man. And he runs around, helps some people out, gets, you know, some food out of it. Uh, and the whole while, he's like, I just feel like I could be doing more. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I could be helping. So I'm waiting for the next, you know, real mission. And he keeps calling Stark and Happy Hogan. And it's just nothing on the other end. Like, they only just don't want him to die because that would be bad for Tony's conscience. You know what I mean? So 
It's interesting. Um, so I, look, tonally, the the whole spirit of this film, I cannot speak highly enough. It is great. It injects that Spider-Man humor in there. Um, now, as far as just slight negative things, I think there are some slight pacing issues. There are some things that are, you know, maybe at the cost of being kind of humorous, kind of cut. Uh, you know, the rhythm down a little bit. I don't feel like I'm on a crazy ride as much, but you know, it's really not supposed to be like that, right? But that's my thing. There's a little bit of a, of a pacing issue. Um, the end of the film, uh, while really, really great and honestly has one of the best post credit scenes I've ever seen, um, for, for a story is, I don't want to say predictable, but it's kind of, you know, the usual thing, the thing you would expect. Um, and partially a thing that we've kind of put together from the trailer. So I still have kind of a gripe there. Um, but other than that, it's nothing but good things for me. I had a smile on my face the whole time. It reignited that love of the MCU for me. And as a huge, huge Spider-Man fan, like I can't be happier. This movie is amazing. So official score from me, guys, nine out of 10. Nine out of 10, nearly a perfect picture on my end. Um, and normally, guys, I don't even like to do reviews like this. My review might change as I see the film more, which I'm definitely going to do. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. going to see this movie a ton. But for now, for the sake of putting a review out there, 9 out of 10 from the Den of Nerds. Guys, go check this movie out. I truly think it's it's a great picture. It just shows that Marvel can take an amazing amount of care with certain characters and certain properties and put out some incredible stuff. Uh, as a Spider-Man fan, like you should be really, really proud. Like there's a lot of Spider-Man fans out there. Like there were people in the theater that were like, yo, Andrew Garfield sucks. And you know, like just kind of arguing back and forth. We've been on this crazy ride as Spider-Man fans since we were kids, man. A lot of great Spider-Man stuff out there. This is now the new status quo and I couldn't be happier. So let me know in the comment section. Have you seen the movie yet? No spoilers. No spoilers in the comment section, but let me know what you think. Uh, if you haven't, you know, maybe just, you know, let's roll with that hype train. Let me know what you're excited about. Um, you know, come back maybe, uh, after you've seen it and let's chat. I'll put a spoilery review or maybe like an Easter egg breakdown video out as well. Maybe after I see the movie again, uh, talk about, you know, some certain elements, you know, after people have gotten a chance to see it. But for now, yeah, just hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you like listening to me here, or if you, like, if you like listening to me say things out of my mouth with nerdy content coming out of them, you know, you might want to subscribe. That was the worst pitch ever. Subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, how about that? That's that's a little bit better. But uh, yeah, like the video if you thought it was dope. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Tons of content coming at you here at the Den of Nerds, as always. I hope you are having an awesome and nerdy day. See ya!